I hate doing open box videos, but let's go ahead and do this. So anyway, uh, this is what we get out of the box. All right, so really actually kind of an, a nice looking box. I mean, for being a box. And oh wow, I wasn't expecting that. So it comes with its own case, warranty card, and let's see here, warranty card, user manual, yeah, okay, butt cap, all right. All right, so it comes in this fancy case. Uh, the case is actually really pretty nice. It has a handle on it and uh, a zippery thingy. And in the box, it came with an extra butt cap, which I need because they must know me. But anyway, here's the lens itself. So the front filter thread is 77 millimeter. And that is one deep, deep lens hood. I mean, that thing is like crazy deep. Uh, it comes with this collar and the collar I'm guessing, yeah, it's hinged right here, so most likely you can just undo this nut if you don't want to deal with the collar. And just pop it off, just like that. This is actually a very light lens. I'll wait here in just a minute, but let's put the collar back on and make sure that we're set back at the top here. So I guess that line right here on the collar uh, matches up with this line right here so at least that way we know where to set that at so this plate right here is an Arca Swiss style plate but it does have a, a quarter 20 hole in the bottom of it so you can still just mount this to a tripod on its own if you have a tripod that doesn't take uh, an actual plate this is a manual focus lens and it's really easy to turn. It also has a focusing lock on it which makes it pretty nice. Uh, you can tighten down the resistance of the focus if you need to. Now this does focus down to 13, um, 13 inches or 34.5 centimeters. And it's a fully weather sealed design and it's a one to one macro. and. Uh, it is. It has a gasket on the butt of it. I'm going to be using it with a Viltrox adapter on the back of my Sony a7R 3 which kind of negates the weather sealing, but that's okay. It should work just fine. Now it's electronic aperture, and that'll, that will actually be controlled by the adapter. So you do have to use an adapter with electronics on it if you want to use it on Sony. Now this lens is very light. It only weighs about two pounds. So yeah, it shouldn't be a problem even without this bracket on there. And uh, it's 12 elements in 9 groups and it has 3 ED elements and 3 HR elements in it which makes it really good glass so almost no chromatic aberrations. Uh, the lens I tested at Photo Plus is extremely sharp and I expect this one to be the exact same way. Now without the collar it weighs just a little over 2 pounds uh, 925 grams, 32 ounces, and 2.038 pounds. So, yeah, really pretty light without the tripod uh, collar adapter. And I really don't know that you need this thing. And I, you could probably find it handy, but if you're doing like portraiture with this lens, you probably don't need it. All right, so to test out the Irix. Uh, 150 millimeter dragonfly. We're going to take a picture of some Pasilla peppers that Bob bought in. That's Bob. He brought in these peppers. And it's kind of a tribute to Edward Weston's uh, bell peppers that he shot. I don't know if they were bell peppers. Maybe they were Pasilla peppers. If you Google Edward Weston pepper, this is, this is what you come up with. So there's some some pretty good stuff in there and uh, I've always really enjoyed this series over the years so we're just gonna play with peppers as, as a tribute now normally I don't do stuff like this I don't try to recreate other people's artwork but uh, I think it's kind of 
I don't know, kind of a, a good exercise and practice to uh, kind of figure out how he did this. And we've got a pepper that actually looks kind of like this one here. And we're going to do some internals. But the main thing about these is the lighting. I mean, they're just lit beautifully. And uh, that's really what Edward Weston was really known for, was being able to control lighting early on. And he did some just amazing pieces. So we're going to set up on some black velvet and some wood and stuff and see what we get. So this is what the lighting setup now looks like. So I've got one diffuser over the light and then another one over that diffuser. So I'm shooting this at f22 at two seconds and then I've got a two second timer set up on the camera just to make sure there's no vibration. Let's take a look at the bokeh from this lens really quick. So the bokeh itself is actually really good. Uh, the uh, bokeh balls don't have any onioning texture in them, which is really nice. And they're really smooth at f2.8, which is what this was shot at. And this was just some string lights that were out of focus and just really, really clean. So this shot was at f2.8 and you can see that this is really clean. Um, extremely sharp where it needs to be, but really shallow depth of field. And, uh, you know, these bottles are only about probably a foot tall, so, you know, really pretty small. Uh, but it gives you an idea of what the book is like. Now, in this shot, again, this is step down. This is F5. So you can see that there is a little bit of shape to the bokeh balls in the background, but still extremely smooth and just really sharp and clean. And you can tell I've got her nose in focus, but, like, this part of her forehead is out of focus. And uh, you can see it again in her neck, you know, that's totally in focus. So I was just a hair off on the focus there. But I think overall, this just goes to show you like how pleasing this actually is. This is a very curious shot. So I just showed you guys this. But what I didn't show you was the curious astigmatism that this lens has. And it does have some very bizarre astigmatism. So if something's backlit, and in this case it is, we get this doesn't show up all the time it only shows up when something is heavily backlit and in this situation yeah you can see it just kind of shows up but still overall it's a minor flaw that I can live with all right let's take a look at the resolution really quick so this is at f2.8 and you can see this is really really clean um, if we look at the center here keep in mind you know that the sharpening on the camera is turned off but you'll see that uh, this is still really good, even though there's some diffraction going on. Uh, I am focused in on the CDs, and the corners, the extreme corners, are actually really sharp. So that is just extremely impressive. So if we move on here, this is f6.3. This is where it's sharpest in the center. And you can see everything is tightening up nicely. And uh, even the corners 
are just brilliantly sharp. And there's no barrel distortion on this lens either. So let me skip ahead here again. This is f11. And this is where the extreme corners are at their sharpest. And just to give you an idea, at f2.8, the resolution on this is about 3,500 lines of resolution. Actually, it's a little less. It's 3,300. Uh, the corners themselves are about 2,900. And then at f6.3, the center is at 4,600 lines of resolution, and the corners are at 4,500. And this is all on the A7R 3. And uh, at f11, where we're at right now, the corners are at 4,500, and the center is uh, sorry. The corners are at 4,400, and the center is at 4,500. And that is really impressive. But re what really impresses me about this lens is this is at f32. I am not kidding you. So let me just show you f32 right here. Um, diffraction sets in a little bit, so it does get just a little bit softer, as you can obviously tell. This the center is starting to look like f2.8. But our whole scene is in focus, and you can see that everything is just perfectly in focus. And this has a really shallow depth of field, so getting everything in focus, even the corners are good. With just a little bit of sharpening, this is stellar. And you don't find lenses that shoot at f32 that are this sharp. It just doesn't happen. So, yeah, kudos to Irix for this, because this thing is filled with nothing but good glass. If I turn on the EXIF data so you can see which one's which, this is f2.8, f6.3, f11, and f32. So let me just turn that off again so you can actually see the image. And now we're going to zoom into it. And so we're just going to look at the center really quick. And you can see there ain't a whole lot of difference. I mean, yeah, f32 is slightly soft, but once that's sharpened up a little bit, it just works. I mean, this thing, for 150 millimeters, this is hands down the best telephoto macro lens that you can get on the market right now, period. That's just the way I look at it. But that's for macro. How does this thing do with people? Well, let's, uh, let's check it out and see. I'm out here uh, with Shelby, and here, here she is. <laughs> and I'm short and she's tall, so we're going to make this work. But this is going to be perfect for the Irix. So we're going to go ahead and start doing some, some telephoto portrait shots around a bridge. That's really good. Let's take a look at a few of these shots and you're going to notice that I shot these about 40 feet away. These are all shot at f2.8 and I was able to actually get her face fully in focus uh, fairly easily when she was on the bridge because it was a simple separation of background. So it's very easy to dial in. Uh, I thought it would be a little harder because of the long focus draw being a macro lens and you'll notice that as we move along here when we're doing standard portrait shots like this, it was actually pretty easy to find focus. I really didn't have a problem. Uh, her whole face is in focus. It worked out really well. But when I got to this part, when I was shooting these, these were 100 feet away, and these were not easy to dial in. It took several tries to do this. 
So this is where that long focus draw really kind of screws up shooting people because when you try to get some distance between you and your subject it is a lot harder to focus and right here you can see that you know at f2.8 it's slightly soft but it did get her so that was good and when you're doing standard headshots it's really easy and the detail is amazing the closer you get to your subject you can see just between these two shots that if I go back here the level of detail doesn't seem like much here but it's really sharp here and it's the same setting. I didn't change the settings at all. But I was actually kind of surprised when I did these because now I'm about 60 feet away and this was a little tricky under these lighting conditions because I was able to separate her from the background but still hitting focus was really difficult. I was going for her eyes and you can see I just missed it. So I'm really focused more in on her shoulder. And on this shot pretty much focused in on her finger. And right here, um, you can tell that I kind of cheated a little bit. I had to use the pillar to focus in because now, again, I'm probably 60, 70 feet away. And uh, this was a little tricky because now we were in low light and, you know, I was using a strobe, uh, so I didn't actually have a modeling light to get this down and this this was a little tricky so I didn't exactly hit every one this is slightly out of focus on her eyes and I, it still works as a photo but yeah just not the detail that I was hoping I would get and same here now that it's starting to get a little bit darker uh, I switched my lighting around and I do like the softness in this of this photo but again I'm actually slightly focused past her face on the pillar like her face is slightly forward so it didn't exactly work out the way that I wanted it to but then when we go back to headshots again I'm totally hitting it even though now I'm at a much higher ISO because we're almost in you know no light you can tell by the background it's very dark out and I'm lighting the whole scene with just a Godox 8200 with an S7 softbox on it and that's it and even then I'm only using it at like an eighth power and same with this shot again I was trying to use the pillar to find my focus and just missed her face a little bit but the shot still works alright let me just sum this up for you so this is an excellent macro lens and it has excellent image quality uh, no chromatic aberrations really good coma it has a very slight astigmatism when shooting macro stuff that's backlit. Uh, but outside of that, there's no barrel distortion. You know, you don't see lenses that produce this kind of image quality for 600 bucks. And this thing is a hell of a steal at that price point. The only downfall about this lens is it's not very good at telephoto. You know, it's excellent for portrait work, but at telephoto it kind of struggles. But anyway, I highly, highly recommend this. So anyway, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more information like this, and as usual, the links are in the description, and we'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Ooh, well, mm-hmm. Crunchy. Models are crunchy and sweet.